Welcome to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. It appears we're ready to go in the Tuscaloosa Regional. I mean, what more do you need to see? And what a first game here in Tuscaloosa. It is Troy out of the Sun Belt in that large selection against the Clemson Tigers making their first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. Four teams, of course, at Road Stadium. Later on, it'll be the host, the SEC tournament champions, Alabama, taking on Alabama State. Looks like beautiful weather all weekend in Tuscaloosa, and it is a thrill for us to be with you with the former All-American of Tennessee, Madison Shipman. I am Eric Fried, and what a great way to get started here. What should be a very entertaining regional. A couple of teams making history here today, Madison. Well, Eric, I've been really looking forward to this matchup because of the first for both of these teams getting to experience regionals. But when I look at both of these squads, they've actually got a lot of similarities. They're both led by stellar pitchers in the circle, and they also get big time run production from their hitters in the top four spots. But for Troy, one of their big time hitters is Kelly Horn, and she has been on quite the hit streak as of late. She has a big time swing coming from the right side over the past seven games. She's batting over 550 with three home runs, nine RBI. So she is a player that is getting hot at the right time, but she is going to have her work cut out for her going up against Valerie Cagle. Is there anything Valerie Cagle cannot do? We don't know because we have not seen it yet. She can pitch in the circle. She can hit the ball with power to all fields. She is definitely the leader for this Clemson squad. Clemson making their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament in just their second year as a program. Their first full season, of course, last season was cut short because of COVID-19. They were the regular season champions in the ACC. Troy making their first appearance in the NCAA tournament since 1996. First time they've been an at-large bid into the NCAA. So really, two teams that can't wait to get going and we can't wait to bring it to you. It's Troy, it's Clemson. The first pitch in Tuscaloosa is next. Welcome to the second meeting all time between Troy and Clemson. It happens in the NCAA tournament. As Clemson gets set for their first pitch, in the NCAA tournament, and who else but Valerie Cagle set to make that first pitch, the ACC Player of the Year and Freshman of the Year, Madison. Valerie Cagle can truly do it all. She is such an athletic and dynamic player for this Clemson team. And what you're going to see out of her in the circle is she throws with really good velocity. She's going to bring that ball in there in the low 70s with really good movement as well. She works all four quadrants of the strike zone. Shows She's going to work that drop ball down in the zone. She also has a rise ball that she will work up in the zone as well. But the key to her success is her off speed. It's not quite a typical changeup that you see out of the hands of most players pitchers it still has some pretty good velocity on it some really good spin and that way she gets a lot of swings and misses on that pitch well, let's take a look at the troy lineup brought to you by capital one this is a team that loves to score runs jade sinis will lead off katie webb the senior bat second both first team all conference selections and as you look down the lineup a lot of players who can put themselves on the bases and a lot of players that can drive in runs. This is a team that averages better than five runs a game, representing the Sun Belt, one of four teams from the Sun Belt to make the NCAA tournament. And here is history for Clemson. Their first ever pitch in an NCAA tournament comes from Valerie Cagle against Troy, and we are underway. 85 degrees and sunshine in Tuscaloosa, I must say. And no such things as jinxes. The weather forecast looks fantastic in Tuscaloosa. Temperatures in the high 80s to the low 90s. I know weather is going to be an issue around the country, but we've been told expect a lot of this over the next three days, which is some great news as we get ready for what should be a very busy weekend in Tuscaloosa. Up to seven games played at the Rhodes House. Ground ball to second. Cammy Pereira throws it over to Keller at first, and Sinis is retired for out number one of game number one. We take a look at the Clemson defense, 37 errors on the season. This is an area where they really cleaned up over the past year. Again, such a new program, but just at full speed right away under head coach John Rittman. Mackenzie Clark anchors the outfield and center field. JoJo Hyatt behind the plate catcher, catching Cagle. Strike one to Katie Webb, the senior first baseman at 375 on the season. 
Madison mentioned Horn and what she does, but Katie Webb is a great table setter. 254 career hits for Webb. First team all conference selection. Chop foul, it's one and two. Eric, I think one thing that we gathered out of our conversations, being able to talk to players like Katie Webb and Kelly Horn earlier in the week, is how they simplify the game. They're not players that go up to bat and try to put the entire weight of the world on their shoulders. They are truly going out there just to have fun, simplifying the game down to see the ball, hit the ball. Nothing more than that, and that's one of the reasons why this Troy offense has been so successful this year. Webb holds up, or does she? Yes, check swing. Well, it really is an emotional moment, too, for players like Katie Webb, of course. A player in her fifth year. She's from Salem, Alabama. That's chop foul. She said she and some of her teammates would go to the Rhodes House to watch NCAA regionals that Alabama was playing in, and here they are playing at Rhodes Stadium in the NCAA tournament. She said it's so crazy how things come full circle, and she was just so excited to have the opportunity to compete in regionals here in Tuscaloosa. She's been really good last 10 games, hitting better than 400 for Troy. And when you look at the span of the season, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and you want to be peaking right here in May. You want to be playing your best ball of the year in the postseason, and she's doing exactly that. Webb well, off of the shortstop. Hill strap and into the outfield, and Troy has their first base run. Of course, you're going to hear a lot of noise. Troy is about well, two hours, 45 minutes or so southeast of Tuscaloosa. And the players are telling us, oh, our fans travel well, and <laughs> they're going to be making some noise here at the Rhodes House. I think we're going to be hearing noise from the stands, but also in the dugout as well. They're a team that plays with a lot of passion and a lot of energy on the field. You can just see how excited Katie Webb was to reach first base on that fantastic long battle of an at-bat. Yeah, great at-bat, scored a single, first hit of the regional goes to Webb, and the first pitch to Kelly Horn is a called strike. Horn, the sophomore from Tallahassee, second-team all-conference selection. 101. Troy did not win. Oh, go ahead, Madison. I was going to say, I think that at bat from Katie Webb really sparked the rest of the offense, and it really set the tone of what they're trying to accomplish in the box. They know that they're facing one of the best pitchers in the country in Valerie Cagle, and they continue to be aggressive. They are laying off of that off speed that you're seeing come in there, and they're attacking that drop ball down in the zone. And it took Katie Webb a couple of swings to figure out how to get her barrel underneath it. So that's going to be the challenge for Horn here to follow up that fantastic at bat of her teammate before her. Up high, it's three and one. This is a matchup of two teams that lost their last games, Clemson in the ACC championship game to Duke. Troy in the Sun Belt tournament fell to South Alabama. In that tournament, Horn was six for nine with three homers and seven runs batted in. She draws a walk, two aboard with one down here in the first. So early struggles and already 16 pitches thrown by Valerie Cagle. Well, Madison said, what doesn't she do? You see her hitting numbers at the top of that graphic, her pitching numbers at the bottom. And I, I must say, that is just a small sample of some of the areas where she leads this team. You look at any offensive category, any pitching category, you'll see her name at the top of the list. Oh, and she plays outfield as well. So she is just so athletic out there for the squad. Literally can do anything for them. And here we're seeing her. It looks like she's maybe trying to get some of the nerves out of the way. Remember, she is just a freshman. She play, A freshman and a half is what I'm going to call it. She did play the 2020 season, of course, shortened because of COVID. 
now getting an opportunity to compete in her first postseason. And having nerves is okay. Everybody's going to have a little bit of butterflies when they set foot on the field. But the true great players learn how to channel that nervous energy into focus. And I think that's what we're going to see Valerie Cagle learn how to do here throughout this first inning and really throughout this entire first game is adjusting to playing with that pressure on her shoulders. O2 pitch to Katie Lively. Oh, there's that off speed that's up in the zone, swing and a miss for round number two. That pitch is so good. Typically when pitchers are throwing change-ups, it's very, very slow, dropping down into the mid-40s, but she still keeps some good velocity on this pitch, and look at the movement on it as well. It almost looks floaty because it has such tight spin, just floating in there slightly slower than her high-velocity pitches, and that's a pitch that she gets a lot of swings and misses on. Swing and a miss by Libby Baker, freshman designated player. At 2.22 on the season with a couple homers and nine runs batted in. You'll see a lot of Alabama hometowns here today because you've got Troy from Alabama, Alabama State in game two against the Alabama Crimson Tide as Clemson has dropped in. Of course, if we've been following, as we've been following the selection process and the announcement of teams in Clemson, was one of the 20 predetermined sites to host an NCAA tournament first round game. Didn't get selected to host and was sent to Alabama, the number three seed. Oh, there's Cable bouncing back nicely. Back to back strikeouts to end the threat and end the half inning. Valerie Cagle utilizing her off speed earlier in this at bat, but she comes in with that drop ball 72 miles per hour. Clemson's up to bat. Well, Troy got a single and a walk in the first inning, but Cagle with back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the threat. That means Clemson's coming to the plate as we get ready for the home half of the first inning in Tuscaloosa. And in the circle for Troy, Leanna Johnson. Well, we talked about Valerie Cagle being a fantastic strikeout pitcher for Clemson, but Troy has one as well. Leanna Johnson, one of the top leading strikeout pitchers in the nation. She's going to work the ball both sides of the plate. She has a curveball, screwball combo. So depending on if she's facing a righty or a lefty, she's going to utilize both of those pitches. And she also has an off speed similar to what we saw out of the hands of Valerie Cagle. It's not a true change up, but just enough to take some velocity off of it so that she gets a couple of uh, swings and misses. And that's what her goal is, is to get a ton of those today. Here's the Clemson starting lineup brought to you by Capital One with Mackenzie Clark, speedy leadoff hitter, set to go. Bottled by Ensley Gilstrap, and then Valerie Cagle bats in the three slot, as we mentioned before, the ACC freshman and player of the year. And it's strike one from Johnson, 28th start of the season, her 34th appearance, working to the freshman Clark. Clark gets ahead 0-2. Uh, Johnson rather gets ahead 0-2 on Clark. Clark comes in at 359 in the season, nine homers, 28 runs batted in. First team all-conference selection in the ACC. And a threat to steal if she gets on. This is a Clemson offense. We mentioned the Troy offense, Madison, averaging a little bit better than five runs a game. Clemson's averaging five and a half runs a game, and they can do it in a variety of ways. They can beat you with the speed on the base pass, moving the line forward. They've hit 62 home runs as a team on the season. As I mentioned, the stolen bases, 82 stolen bases in 96 attempts. So John Rittman has a young team that can get you in a variety of ways. And I think and it's I so important. I must say, some of, the, some of the attire we're seeing from the Clemson dugout <laughs> may not be official issue, but I don't, I don't hate it. Eric, it, it's only crazy if it doesn't work, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it, I think ball. it's so important that a team, especially in the postseason, can score in a variety <laughs> of different ways and have a bunch of different attire, right? We've seen some unicorn horns and some uh, butterfly wings on the heads. 
And I thought Cagle was the unicorn. You know, the MVP, <laughs> the great pitcher. She can do whatever. You know, like one of those unicorn type players. But I can see she can share the wealth. Getting upstairs is Johnson and getting Clark to swing for out number one. Johnson does like to throw that rise ball. And what she'll do is she will keep climbing the ladder if you're going to continue to swing at it. And that's exactly what Mackenzie Clark did in that at bat. Swung at those rise balls early in that the at bat. And Leanna Johnson just continued to throw it higher and higher until she recorded that strikeout. Here is Ansley Gilstrap. And that comes inside and hits her, so she will be aboard for Clemson's first base runner of the NCAA tournament. This is another rise ball. Johnson trying to get it underneath the hands of Gilstrap up at the plate. And Gilstrap is crowding the plate. Her toes are right up on that chalk line. And remember, if the ball is in the batter's box, the batter has the right to the box, so they do not have to make an attempt to get out of the way of that pitch. Because it sails right in on her elbow, she's awarded that free pass. That's a ball inside the cake. I'm going to give Gilstrap a little credit here. There was no elbow pad there. She took that right off the elbow and didn't even flinch. He probably didn't even feel it in this moment because she knows <laughs> it's the postseason. Yeah. It is regionals. <laughs> she will do whatever it takes to get on base. Two and zero to Cagle. I mean, she really is a unicorn, a player who has stepped right into this Clemson program. Look at those offensive numbers, and we already talked about her pitching numbers. Doing it as a freshman, played in a shortened season last year to get her feet wet, and now helping to lead this Clemson program to Alabama in the NCAA tournament. Two one. Yeah. Lana Johnson's going to be very careful with her. You can imagine Madison, someone who's driven in 41 runs, hitting 414 on the season. And she really has power to all fields. So already we're seeing Leanna Johnson trying to throw the ball on different sides of the plate, seeing if she'll bite at those pitches. That right there, a really good spot. That's a pitch that even if the batter were to swing at it, there's not a whole lot you can do with it because of its location on the low and outside part of the strike zone. But we do know that Valerie Cagle does have power to all fields. So she's going to have to be very careful with this 3-2 pitch. She told you if she needs a strike, She's going to go with the screw. So we'll see if that is what Cagle gets here. Tries to work inside, and it's a walk to Cagle. So two on with one out here in the first. Defensively for Troy. As the catcher, Candela Figueroa, goes out to talk to Johnson. Tennis in center field with Lively and Thompson in the corners. Gaten and Webb at third and first. And Horn and Calhoun up the middle with Johnson in the circle. Sophomore from Brantley, Alabama. Here's Gambarda, transfer from Furman, first team all-conference selection in the ACC. Take strike one. Now, and I think that Marissa Gambarda has one of the top, toughest jobs in all of college softball and that she has to hit behind a hitter like Valerie Cagle, knowing that there are a lot of teams out there are going to pitch around Cagle to get to her. And that is definitely a mindset that she has had to adjust to this season. A lot of times Fouled as a batter, off, it's you'll... Two you'll get up there and you get almost too amped up in those types of situations knowing, hey, the other team is looking to get to me. They didn't want to pitch to my to my teammate, so I have to get the job done. And Coach John Rittman said he's had conversations with her just trying to get her to realize that it's okay if you don't get the job done every time, but have a consistent approach to every single one of your at-bats. 
Bart has held her own this season. 317, 12 homers, 41 runs batted in. The RBI total matching Cagle for the team lead. What a job done by John Rittman, architect of this program. He was hired on November 3rd of 2017. And he came here with a lot of experience. This is a new experience for all but one of these Clemson players. But for John, he's been in the NCAA regionals before. He's been to Tuscaloosa before. That just misses for a ball. It's one and two. Coach Rittman got to experience a super regional atmosphere here in Tuscaloosa back in 2011 with that Stanford team. Ended up winning game one of that series, but Alabama fought back and won the last two games of that super regional to head to the World Series. Gilstrap at second base is the Clemson player that has NCAA tournament experience with USC Upstate, played in the Auburn Regional in 2016, Knoxville Regional in 2017. Popped up back and out of play. We'll do the 2-2 again. And what a catch and by the Clemson's Clemson defense fan Clemson's defense is stands. much improved, yes. Much improved and for the fans as well. Coach Rittman said that he improved their defense on the field, but we didn't realize it was off the field too. Barta battling at the plate. With two on and one out here in the first. We've seen some really tough at bats from both sides already early in this game. And you mentioned just a battle by Gambarda here. Fouling off a bunch of different pitches. Johnson trying to get her to chase at that rise ball early in this at bat. Goes back to it and that's a tough take right there. You know that rise ball coming in looks about the size of a beach ball. A really nice job by Gumbarda to hold up and bring it to a full count. This will be the 10th pitch of the at-bat. And it's a called strike three. Johnson battles back to get her second strikeout, two down. Well, Eric, you mentioned it. When talking to Leanna Johnson, she said, if I need a strike, my screwball is my go-to pitch, and she goes to it here after a battle by Marissa Gambarda up at the plate, gets Gambarda thinking she's going to go back to that rise ball and just freezes her on that screwball on the inside part of the plate for her second strikeout on the day. There's Aaliyah Logaleo who takes ball one. Freshman who plays third base. 247 on the season, good pop with seven homers. One and one. One and two to Logaleo. I think we're seeing early in this game that Clemson is chasing after that rise ball. Johnson has thrown several rise balls already this game and just continues to keep on climbing that ladder with that pitch. If Clemson's going to swing at it, keep on throwing it up and out of the zone. Just getting a piece to stay alive. Logaleo, second team, all conference selection. 
A little over a week ago, had a memorable game for Clemson. Four for four, three homers, including a grand slam. And the win over Syracuse tried to check, and she did. And it's three and two. Well, it looked like Katie Webb was trying to see if she could convince the first base umpire otherwise, but Bogaleo did hold up on this one. So the runners will be in motion with two down and a 3-2 pitch coming to Logaleo. That win over Syracuse where Logaleo had the 10 RBI clinched the ACC regular season title for the Tigers in their first full year as a program. Gave up just one run in the ACC tournament. But unfortunately for Clemson, that one run was scored by Duke in the championship game. Another 3-2. Logaleo hits one deep to left. This one is out of here. Three-run shot by Aaliyah Logaleo. Little of that Syracuse magic. 3-0 Clemson. What an incredible at-bat by Aaliyah Logaleo. Early in that at-bat, she was chasing at those rise balls up and out of the zone. She kept swinging at him, but she brought her way back into a good hitter's count, gets a curveball on the outside half of the plate, and pulls it over the left field wall. As soon as that ball left her bat, she knew it was leaving the park. And what a huge way for Clemson to get on the board early in this ball game. Home run number eight on the season for the freshman and the Clemson Tigers score here in the first. Let the record show that the first hit for Clemson in the NCAA tournament was quite memorable. A three-run home run by <laughs> freshman Aaliyah Logaleo. Eric, you can't just you, you just can't help but think about that hit by pitch to Ansley Gilstrap and that walk to Valerie Cagle that really set up both of those runners being on base for Aaliyah Logaleo to come through with that big time home run. Free passes are something that always ends up coming back to bite you, especially here in the postseason. So as a pitcher, you have to do whatever you possibly can to limit those free passes because knowing you're going up against a team like Clemson and they're going to take advantage of it. It's in their first strike, it's two and two. I like Logalea, like you said, Madison, she knew it was gone, but she wanted to hold on to the bat just for a <laughs> moment or two. I'm going to call it like 25 feet or so down the line and not quite a flip. It but was just kind of like a torch. It was, yeah, a it was slam. like kind of like, yes, uh, this bat <laughs> has done something special right here. That's in there for a strike, and batter gave herself up, and that will do it for the inning. Well, Johnson ends up getting three strikeouts, but it's a three run home run from Aliyah Loga Leo, putting Clemson on the board in Tuscaloosa. Back at Rhodes Stadium, Tuscaloosa, Alabama at the University of Alabama. Game one of two today in the Tuscaloosa Regional. Clemson scoring three in the first. Take a three-nothing lead on the Troy Trojans. Now just some of the amazing accomplishments by this Clemson program here in their first full year. They win the regular season championship of the ACC. Had 29 wins in conference play, 42 overall. Strength of schedule close to 100, probably cost them hosting a regional. Duke was actual regional host, but they're playing in Athens because Georgia was one of the predetermined sites. And against RPI top 50, four wins for John Rittman's crew. Six, seven, eight here for Troy in the second, and it's strike one from Cagle. Katie Webb had a good at-bat in the first inning. Madison gave up a hard hit 
That went off of Gilstrap at second, off the bat of Webb, a walk to Horn, but then Cagle really found her rhythm, found her groove. And to your point, maybe there was a little bit of excitement, nerves. You know, first ever pitcher for Clemson in an NCAA tournament, but settled down against Lively and Baker to get back-to-back -back strikeouts. And honestly, Eric, I don't. I think if you're a freshman or a senior, you still go out there and regionals have a bit of those butterflies, that excitement, and you just got to figure out how to channel all of that energy. And I think it just took Valerie Cable, Cagle a couple of at bats to figure that one out. But you just notice the late break and the solid movement that she has on her drop ball. That pitch is really hard to make an adjustment on, especially when it's moving to both sides of the plate. Comes inside, but misses to Audra Thompson for ball two. It's two and two. Thompson, the freshman right fielder. Thompson, Figueroa, Gayton. Do up for Troy here in the second. There's some off speed work from Cagle again. Third strikeout for Valerie, one away. Well, we are in the Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa Regional. I'll try not to say that fast three times, or maybe I'll do it <laughs> just one time before we're done here today. Troy and Clemson are going to match up right now. Bama and Alabama State in game two of our doubleheader. The winner of this game will take on the winner of our second game tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time, noon Eastern. Double elimination tournament as the NCAA tournament is back after a year away. Cagle throws a strike, it's one and one. One and two to the catcher, Candela Figueroa. Figueroa had an interesting start to this at bat. She squared to fake bunt. It almost looked like that was her way of trying to get a better look at the pitches that Valerie Cagle's bringing in there. And that one was the off speed, and she was well out in front. And Cagle comes back right with another one after seeing that swing on the, on the pitch previous. Utilizes that off speed yet again. When it's coming out of the hand, it looks like a lot of her high velocity pitches, but you can just see that tight rotation on that pitch, taking enough off of it to where batters don't recognize it coming in, and they are swinging well out in front of that pitch. Strike one to Kennedy Gayton. One of four freshmen in the starting lineup for Troy here today. Well, that off speed is really dialed in right now for Cagle. And what makes it so good is it's setting up her high velocity pitches as well. So as a batter, when you keep seeing that off speed and all of a sudden she brings that heater in there about 72 miles per hour, it's really hard to make an adjustment. Gayton chops it to third, throwing on the run, and it gets away from the first baseman, Keller. So Gayton is aboard with two down here in the second. Off the bat, this looked like it was going to be a routine ground ball out over to third base. It off of the end of the bat of Gayton, a drop ball she gets on top of. Got a little bit of air underneath that ball, but Aaliyah Logaleo ended up throwing that ball on the run over to first base down in the dirt. And Kaya Keller was not able to come up with it. It is an error on Logaleo at third. That's the 38th error committed by Clemson this year. Defense has improved. 973 fielding percentage as a team. Down low, it's one on one to the number nine hitter, Logan Calhoun.
One and two. Swing and a miss, and Cagle already with five strikeouts in her first six outs of the game. One and a half played in Tuscaloosa. Clemson up 3 nothing over Troy. Women's College World Series returning to Oklahoma City. Action starts Thursday, June 3rd, noon Eastern time. It'll be live on ESPN. Of course, for more information on the 2021 Women's College World Series, you can go to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. I think Madison already has her ticket punch for Oklahoma City after a, <laughs> <I do. laughs> a year off. It's been punched for a long time. Eric. I was going to say, did you... Been... Did you Book that ticket more than enough in advance. Yes. Like yes. the day it became available, you were you were on it. As soon as they announced that softball was being played again, <laughs> you can guarantee that I punched my ticket to the World That's Series. Right. Seven, eight, nine for Clemson. Up three, nothing here in the bottom half of the second. Grace Matamore getting the start here today, which was a little bit of a question after the ACC tournament. That comes inside and plate umpire Don Brown's taking a look at Matamor that maybe she got hit by a pitch, but <laughs> I think Grace wants to swing the bat, turned her back on it pretty quickly and <laughs> said, let's swing. Well, she's somebody who's battling back from a bit of an injury <laughs> last weekend at the ACC tournament, playing first base, and there was a collision running down the line where her forearm ended up running into the knee of the Duke runner. Strike three, Johnson gets her fourth strikeout, one down. And it almost looked like Grace Matamore might have gotten hit on one of the pitches before that, and I like how Leanna Johnson capitalizes on that, knowing that maybe Matamore was going to be a bit tentative on those pitches on the inside half of the plate. She attacks her with that screwball and sits down the first batter of this inning. Four strikeouts now for Johnson. She now has 614 in her career. The sophomore second on the all-time list, but Ashlyn Williams is way far out in the distance with 1,305 strikeouts. So 614's closer, still a way to go. Johnson keeps throwing strikes, though. It's 0-2 to Keller. Little bloop out behind second. It'll drop in in front of Sinis. And a base hit for Keller. The freshman is aboard with one down here in the second inning. Well, a lot of eyes will be on this regional with Alabama and Clemson in the same regional. UCLA, of course, the defending national champions trying to repeat Oklahoma, the number one seed. Duke, the ACC tournament champions, will be hosting in Athens at the University of Georgia. And the SEC getting in 12 of their 13 teams in the tournament. Highlighted by Alabama, the SEC tournament champions. When you talk about UCLA and Oklahoma, both of those squads just so good all year long. And I think one of my favorite parts, Erica, about watching the selection show was when Holly Rowe interviewed Patty Gasso after they got that number one overall seed. And she said, you know what? I'm just glad it's over. Because then now they get to focus <laughs> on going out there and playing those opponents. You, you play all season long just hoping that you can get that number one seed. And when they were finally able to get it, it was a big stress relief off of their shoulders. And now they can just go out there and play softball and not have to worry about where they were going to end up in those final national seedings. Fouled off by Stewart. 
I think the overall theme from a lot of the coaches that we've heard from, the ones that we've talked to, like Patrick Murphy, the Alabama head coach, for example, you know, when you say, well, you know, what did you do to deserve Clemson being placed in your region? They're the number 10 team in the country on the ESPN.com USA softball poll. This is a team that is excellent and in a regional against Alabama, swing and a miss, and Johnson has strikeout number five. But I, I think for Gasso and for Murphy, a lot of these coaches, you've got to beat really good teams more than once. It can start in the regional. It will continue in the super regional. John Rittman's got a really good team. And to be the best, as the saying goes, you got to beat the best. And you may have to beat some of the best teams, plural, and you have to do that to get to Oklahoma City. And I think the mindset talking to all these coaches is just bring it on. Bring on that tough yes. competition because that's what all these teams prepare all year for is to play the best of the best in May and June. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in this Tuscaloosa Regional. I mean, we've got some of the best pitchers across the nation here in one spot battling it out against each other. It is going to be a tough weekend all weekend long. And championship teams, really. Alabama, the SEC tournament champs, the regular season champs in the ACC and Clemson. Alabama State, the two-time defending SWAC champs. And Troy, as there you see the Lady Hornets getting ready for game number two here. Troy getting to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1996. Great accomplishment for that program that is much improved and perennially good under Beth Mullins now in her seventh year. I want to think a lot of people when looking and seeing that Clemson was getting sent here to Tuscal Tuscaloosa, they were asking why, why were they sent here? And I think a lot of it has to do with that strength of schedule being up there at 92. And it was of no fault of their own just because of COVID. A lot of their games that they had matched up at the beginning of the year against top RPI teams ended up getting canceled. I know they were planning on going down to that St. Pete Clearwater Invitational that's usually in February where they were going to play a, a ton of top RPI teams. And then the ACC ended up cutting 10% of their schedule right off the bat and switching to four-game weekend series. So of no fault of their own, they just weren't able to play the tough schedule that they planned. There goes the runner, and caught stealing is Keller on the throw by Figueroa to retire the side. 3 nothing yes. Clemson after two in T-Town. We are back at the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Game one of the Tuscaloosa Regional. Clemson, thanks to a three-run home run off the bat of Aaliyah Logaleo on top of Troy as we head to the top of the third inning. Valerie Cagle working with a three-run lead for Clemson. Already with five strikeouts for the Tigers. We knew we were going to see a pitcher's duel between these two. Five strikeouts on both sides of the field, but Valerie Cagle being super effective with that off speed. So deceptive out of her hands. There's another look at another one of those off speed pitches. It comes in looking like it's going to be a rise ball or a pitch coming in about 70 miles per hour right there at the belt, and she just takes enough off of it to get all those swings and misses. Strike one to Sinis, leading off the third for Troy. She grounded a second in the first. Cagle's last appearance, of course, was in the ACC title game Saturday. Had 13 strikeouts, gave up just two hits. Three balls left the infield. The ball that brought in the game's only run barely got past the pitcher circle. <laughs> <laughs> but it was enough to score a run for Duke. Cagle had three complete games in the tournament, all tournament team. That misses, it's three and one. On the hit to get on board before that game winning yes. hit was the craziest ball I think I've ever seen put in play. It was a ball well off the end of the bat. That was a pop up down the first baseline. It bounced foul and had so much spin on it that it kicked back into fair territory. And that's ultimately what led to Duke's one run in that victory. Leadoff walk for Sinis to get things going here in the third. It wasn't like it was a roller down the line that had English on it. And it spun back into fair territory. It was like a little soft sand wedge that had a lot of spin on it and was brought back 
on the green and into fair territory before it was touched by anybody in the field for Clemson, so it was a fair ball. You know, I knew it was going to be a good day, but then when you start bringing in those golf references, I know it's mm -hmm. going to get even better right there. But it, that was definitely a hit that I don't think that you could recreate again if you no. tried. Well, there's one that's hugging the line for a moment, but touch foul by Logaleo as Webb, who has the hit for Troy, is at the plate. Troy doesn't steal a lot on the season. 30 steals and 35 attempts. Sinis is four for four. One on one to Webb. I think one of the reasons why they don't steal a lot of bases is because they hit doubles like it's their job. Their top four <laughs> batters in the lineup have double digit doubles on the season. Katie Webb and Kelly Horn both having 17 between the two of them. As Sinis with 14 and Lively, the number four hitter with 10. One and two to Webb. We had great conversations via Zoom with Katie Webb, Kelly Horn, and Leanna Johnson leading up to this game here today. Just a group of players thrilled to be being part of this regional in Tuscaloosa. As I mentioned before, these kids who grew up in Alabama would go to NCAA tournament games in Tuscaloosa. And you just get a sense, real loose group and making a bit of history here. First at large bid in Troy's history and the first trip to the NCAA tournament since 1996 for Troy. Well, it seemed like when talking to both of those players that if they weren't bouncing around on the field looking like they were having fun, then something was horribly wrong, right? They, that's just <laughs> the way that they like to play the game. They like to play loose. They like to play free. And I think you're seeing exactly that early on in this game, even though they're behind by three runs here in the top of the third. Gagel gets the strikeout. And moving on to second base on the strikeout is Sinis as it popped out of the glove of Hyatt. So strikeout number six for Cagle, but good heads up running by Sinis to get in a scoring position with one down. The fantastic job by Sinis. Taking advantage of anything you can get. Valerie Cagle throwing in that drop ball yet again. Gets Katie Webb swinging, but that one goes right off of the glove of JoJo Hyatt. He makes the quick read to try to throw it down to second base, but Sinis just with too much speed and too much of a good jump, able to move on over there into scoring position. There's ball one to Kelly Horn, who walked her first time. Now you get the idea of how Sinis in the leadoff spot is the team leader and leader and run score with 50 on the season. All the opening took the base, and now she's in the scoring position for the top hitter on this Troy team, Kelly Horn. Two and one. You can see on the face of Kelly Horn when she steps into the box, a lot of self-talk and from talking to her earlier this week. She's not somebody that talks to herself a lot about mechanical adjustments or what the pitcher's throwing. She is very much a see ball, hit ball kind of player. She said she can't deal with a lot of those thoughts when she steps into the box, so she makes sure to flush all of those out before she sees a pitch. Chopped to second. Good reach by Pereira to keep it on the infield to get the out. Two down. Sinis takes third.
Very nice play by Cami Pereira over there at second base. This one pounded hard into the ground off the bat of Horn, and she jumps up. And you notice how she doesn't even look over to third base to make a play over there because, because she knows immediately as soon as that ball is in play, her only play is over to first. She makes sure to get the sure out for the second out of this inning. I'll bring up Katie Lively, who struck out in the first. Happy birthday to Katie Lively. A better way to celebrate than being in an NCAA tournament game. Of course, if she could chase this first run home, that'd be the say, best I think birthday that might be gift better. to yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that might be better than just being here, being able to play in this regional will be able to bring home that run. Yeah. One and two. Swung on and missed, and Cagle gets strikeout number seven. Valerie Cagle just dealing out there in the circle, setting this pitch up with the rise ball on the pitch before, and she goes down in the zone with that 72-mile-per-hour drop ball. Man, that thing is filthy. Coming to T-Town, the Troy Trojans will be here. <laughs> Well, if Beth Moens only knew what that sentence meant to the folks watching at Troy, Alabama, this is the celebration right after Troy was announced as an at-large selection to NCAA tournament. Uh, not caught on tape were some apparent near concussions delivered by teammates to other teammates celebrating as Beth Mullins team was celebrating what Beth Mullins had to say but Beth Mullins said you know I don't recommend living on the bubble the anxiety level goes up but the positive was what we just saw there was the most raw true emotion because they all wanted it so bad for the program and the players had come before and that was a genuine celebration that we saw on Sunday night. Well, and the player said that they didn't even hear the full word of That's Troy right. come out. They just heard tr and just started <laughs> celebrating. You could see that raw, genuine emotion out of the entire team when they heard that their name was announced. Just so much fun to be able to watch that and hear from them about their experiences and just how excited they were. And you mentioned it, Eric. They were almost a little bit too excited. Sending might have been sending some of their teammates over there on the, the injury list after some celebrations getting a little bit out of hand. Clark leading off, and it's one and one. Yeah, to your point, Kelly Horn said that she hit someone so hard, <laughs> she was afraid she had hurt somebody, but they had no idea, but they've watched the video back so many times that, you know, they're just breaking down video like they'd break down their at-bats, like, oh, gosh, I didn't even know I hit you. I'm sorry. And, but everybody was okay. There were, we did ask, was there anybody who was put on the injured list because of what happened in the celebration Sunday? No, it was just... A few bumps and bruises, <laughs> all good. <laughs> and Coach was apparently unaware of the fact that the players ended up accidentally hitting each other in those <laughs> celebrations. So she got a little bit concerned there for a second, but we did get confirmation that all of them are okay. Yes. No serious injuries happened during that celebration. But they even said that they've watched that video about a million times since it happened, and it still brings a smile to their face every single time that they watch it. And the other thing I love about it, too, is the, the competitiveness out of Coach Mullins after that, after their celebration. She said, I don't know about you guys, but I don't just want to go to the regional, but I want to win. So she is making sure that her team is competitive through and through. Grounded foul by Clark, who struck out in the first. 
She was at the plate when Keller was caught stealing to end the second inning. 3 nothing Clemson thanks to a three-run home run off the bat of freshman Aliyah Logaleo. Well, it was a very busy first inning for Leanna Johnson through 37 pitches in that first inning. Almost got out of the inning, but gave up the three-run home run to Logaleo with two down. Grounded past third and into left field and all the way to the wall. Clark cruises in the second for Clemson to lead things off in the third. And Eric, you had just mentioned that home run from Aliyah Logaleo, and this was almost the exact same pitch sequence thrown to Mackenzie Clark. Johnson trying to set her up with that rise ball and then goes to the curveball. And Mackenzie Clark gets around it, drives it straight down that left field line all the way to the wall, and an easy stand up double for the speedy Mackenzie Clark. Ninth double of the season for Clark. And that'll bring up the shortstop, Ansley Gilstrap. Popped up. Put away by Calhoun for out number one. Just a really nice way to respond for Leanna Johnson, too, after giving up that double all the way down the line, challenging Ansley Gilstrap with that screwball on the inside half of the plate, jamming her up. But now she's really got her work cut out for her here, going up against Valerie Cagle, who has power to all fields. Misses for ball one. Hagel walked in the first. Putting her on base percentage above 500 on the season. One on one. Hagel had a 23-game hitting streak this season. Came to a close last Friday. This one's hit hard to center field, and it clears the wall. Valerie Kegel with a line shot home run. Home run number 16 on the season. 5-0 Clemson. I know it's old school. If you've got laundry you want to dry, hang it on that line drive off the bat of Valerie Kegel. She hit the ball so hard, and off the bat, I thought that was going to be a for sure double off of the wall, and it just hung up there long enough to sail over that center field wall. I mean, she got all of that pitch. We mentioned power to all fields, but this one just a frozen rope all the way over the center field wall, just a pitch left over the heart of the plate, and Valerie Cagle makes her pay for it. What an incredible swing that Cagle has up there at the plate. So sound, not a lot of movement, waits for a pitch in the zone, and just absolutely hammers it. Sixteen home runs, 43 runs batted in on the season for Cagle. Clemson on top, five nothing. Popped up by Gambarda. Out of play, it's one and one. Cagle had a home run 
in the ACC tournament, named to the all-tournament team. And when they get five runs in their two-year history, they've been pretty good. This one is hit well. That's gone. Gombarda goes deep. Home run number 13 for her. 6-0 Clemson. Marissa Gambarda just doing what she does. She is in that spot to hit behind Valerie Cagle for this exact reason. Her swing has so much power in it. She's somebody who utilizes that leg kick with her front leg to get all of her leg strength into her swing. And this pitch up in the zone and she just clobbers it out to center field. And Leanna Johnson knows it right off of the bat. Another sweet swing from these Clemson Tigers. And that one leaves the yard by a lot. We weren't sure if Valerie Cagle's home run was going to make it over the wall. That one didn't stand a chance of staying in the yard. Now that was a little bit more majestic. That had the hang time. <laughs> <laughs> but is it that as majestic as the, as the unicorn horns? Is it as majestic no. as the unicorn horns that we are seeing <laughs> in the dugout? Three home runs for Clemson here today. And Holly Ward is going to make a pitching change. Leanna Johnson. Well, the conga line is going. I think it's going to keep going during this timeout. Three home runs, six runs in. Tigers loving life in the NCAA tournament. Pitching change with one out in the third inning and Clemson on top, 6-0 over Troy. It's the senior from New Side, Alabama, Kinsley Ray Blassing Game. Well, Blassing Game's going to come in here and just do whatever she can to try to get some momentum back into Troy's dugout. You're going to see her work both sides of the plate, and she has more of your traditional changeup. So it's a flip change. It's substantially slower than her higher velocity pitches that she's going to bring in there. And she's very confident in that pitch. She will throw it back to back. The Blasting Game is used to coming in in tough situations and getting out of jams. She was put in in a game last week in the Sunbelt Conference Championship Tournament against UT Arlington and got out of a bases loaded jam. So this is a really good opportunity here to get her team back in the dugout. Now, Blasting gave me two appearances in the Sunbelt Tourney, both in the same day, seven and a third, six hits, four runs. Johnson's line is complete, 69 pitches, two and a third, six runs all earned, five hits, struck out five. in on the hands of Logaleo. Calhoun has it, two down. Well, this is, as you know, Madison, you played at Tennessee. There's got to be regional management here as well because, you know, you lose this game and this game is far from over, but you've got to start thinking, well, how are we going to battle back? How do we manage our pitchers here? And Leanna Johnson is clearly their ace, and you have to start thinking, well, you know, will we be really hard pressed tomorrow with potentially a couple of games you know just how do you manage your pitching and how do you how do you make that decision right here now obviously Clemson with three home runs today they were on Johnson and had her figure out despite the five strikeouts blasting game misses it's 2-0 and well, that's part of it you have to have that long view here in the in regional play Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And it'd be one thing if Clemson was scoring on a couple of hits, maybe hit off the hands or off the end of the bat, but they were squaring up pitches off of Leanna Johnson. And to your point, they need to think ahead because once you get shoved into that loser's bracket early in regionals, it makes it even tougher to come out of it. And you're just going to have to play more games. Now it can be done even during my career at Tennessee we ended up losing the opening game in one of our regionals and ended up fighting our way back to ultimately win that regional but it was a tough road and my coaches had to be very strategic about when to use what types of pitchers going up against the competition and here pitching coach Holly Ward decided to make a change just knowing that Clemson was really barreling up those pitches out of the hands of Leanna Johnson.
three, one, two, Pereira. Two out walk, and Pereira's aboard. I'll bring up Grace Matamore, who struck out back in the second. And we'll have a pinch hitter, actually, Ariel Oda. We had mentioned that Grace Matamore was somebody who was dealing with some injuries and a pitch came up and in on her. We were questioning whether or not it might have hit her hand. And you got to wonder if maybe that's why they made the move to the pinch hitter here in this situation. Two and one. Two and two. Looks like Coach Rittman improved his defense as well. That was a nice play <laughs> down the third baseline. Well, you got to practice what you hands. preach. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you're going to tell them they have to be better fielding, which was one of the things that he wanted to see from his team from that shortened season in 2020 to this year. You got to show off your hands as well. Two, two. <laughs> Pereira moves on the second. Chopped to shorts. Calhoun throws out Oda to retire the side. We'll talk with Clemson head coach John Rittman has to be pretty pleased with what he's seen so far at the plate and in the circle. Long balls in that inning. Two of them, Kegel and Gumbarda back to back. Three homers in all. Clemson leading in their NCAA debut. Clemson on top, 6 nothing. joined now by John Rittman, the Clemson head coach. John, I know this is nothing new to you. You've been in the NCAA tournament plenty of times, but just to see the joy in your kids at Clemson's faces must be a thrill for you. Oh, no question. They're having fun. They're playing loose. Certainly it helps to get the big three-run home run early, but uh, we're a loose bunch, you know. We're having fun. We're enjoying this experience, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, close this one out today. You guys going up against a tough pitcher in Leanna Johnson, but really zoning in and utilizing that long ball. What's made your at-bat so good today? Well, I think we're being aggressive. You know, I think we're, uh, you know, we've made her pay for some mistakes. She was pitching really well and, and making some tough pitches. Um, we just made her pay for a couple of mistakes that she left over the wide of the plate, and uh, we got a good enough hitting team. If you make a mistake, we're going to take advantage of it. We need you to put on one of those lays that they're passing around in the dugout. I think it would really complete the look for you, John. It's no, a long weekend. No we'll question. They're having fun. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Appreciate it. ACC Coach of the Year, John Rittman, in his second season as Clemson's head coach. His 20th year overall as a head coach. Had 18 successful seasons at Stanford. 750 wins with the Cardinal. But it's a little different when you head to a program. You build it from the ground up. And you build it into an NCAA tournament team in your first full season. I mean, they're pretty good last year in the shortened season, Madison, 19 and 8. They were 5 and 1 in the ACC. They won 11 of 12 when the season was shut down. So they could have been an NCAA tournament team last year, but this is the year where they're making de their debut. And what a debut here in game one. 
Well, it's just incredible what they've been able to accomplish in, in such a short amount of time. And, of course, we had to ask him about it. We we're like, what is the secret sauce? How have you been able to do it? And he said, you know what? I know it sounds cliche, but it came down to just building their program up from the, the fundamentals and the culture that he wanted his program to have, going out there and recruiting kids that fit into the mold, into his culture, and they've just been able to capitalize on that and perform well with the types of kids that he wants in his program. This is down low to Libby Baker, 3-1 and one the count. Baker struck out in the first. Seven strikeouts for Valerie Cagle to go along with her two-run home run. Full count. Lead off walk and Baker's aboard here for Troy in the fourth. Well, you won't miss a minute of the action from the NCAA softball regionals. We take you to the best live action on the seven innings live show. It's on the ESPN app. You can see every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series, and it's only on the ESPN networks. Kaylee Chapman will come on to run for Libby Baker. Audra Thompson steps in. Audra Thompson's a batter who coming into that Sun Belt turn tournament last week only had four hits on the entire season and ended up racking up three hits in last week alone. Carter in the last three games of the tournament went three for 12 at the plate, double, three runs batted in. Well, Troy, one of four Sun Belt teams in the tournament. Out of play. Louisiana, of course, has been one of the top teams all season long, nationally ranked, but South Alabama, Texas State, joining Troy in the tournament. Some really good teams in that conference. And of course, the one that sticks out to me is Texas State going to play in that Austin Regional. They're a team that beat Texas A&M earlier on in this season, and they played Texas really close. I believe that game was all the way back in February. Texas was able to win on a walk-off error. So that'll definitely be a good showdown in Austin this weekend. Look how Sunbelt's represented when you compare it to the American with three and the Big Ten with three teams and just one shy of the ACC, which Clemson represents. Two and two. So far this inning, these Troy batters doing a nice job of laying off of that drop ball low in the zone. The pitch that she that Cagle got a lot of swings and misses on throughout this game. But so far this inning, Troy doing a nice job. Called strike three. Thompson's retired. Eighth strikeout for Cagle. One down. And Cagle noticing that these batters are laying off of that drop ball lower in the zone. The pitch that starts at the knees and drops down. This one she brings up even higher. So this is a drop ball coming in, starting about belly button high, dropping off the table right at the last minute and just freezes Audra Thompson.
Ball one to Figueroa, who struck out in the second. One on one. Two years ago, Candela was the NJCAA Player of the Year for the national champs at Chipola College. Junior from Argentina. One and two. Gagel gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. Nine now for the freshman two down. We've talked all game about things that make Valerie Kegel good. One of which is her power that we've seen already up at the plate. But another is the way that she's able to throw different pitches consistently to different batters. So we saw to Audra Thompson throwing that drop ball consistently. And there to Candela Figueroa decides to bring in that off-speed pitch. She is so dynamic in the circle with just her ability to command several different pitches. One one to Gayton, who reached on an error in the second. One, two. Baker led off with a walk, but back-to-back -back strikeouts by Valerie Cagle getting Thompson and Figueroa. Trying to make it three in a row with the freshman Gaten down in the count. But battling. Kegel strikes out three in a row to retire the side into double digits against Troy. We will talk to Beth Mullins, their head coach, when we come back. Ready for the home half of the fourth inning in Tuscaloosa. Joined now by Troy head coach Beth Mullins in her seventh season as Troy's head coach. And Troy is in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1996. Do not look at the scoreboard, Beth, but just for a second, just what it means just to get to this point for this program because it's been a long journey. Yeah, I'm proud. I'm, I'm very proud. I mean, I'm proud of these girls. I'm proud of all the alumni that have come before that because it's been 25 years in the making and a lot of people have come before us to set us up for success. So really, really pumped and I'm proud to be here. And coach, you guys have some really good hitters in your lineup going up against a very good Valerie Cagle. What sort of adjustments do you want your hitters to make up there? Yeah, I mean, I thought we did a good job coming out and being on time with, you know, 68 to 70. And then she obviously did a great job of changing speeds. And we didn't, you know, go up there with a plan like we should have. And I think the last couple, the last inning, we've done a better job of going up there knowing what speed we want to hit instead of living in the middle. So we got to continue to do that and put some quabs on the board. Thanks, Beth. We appreciate it. Thank you. Beth Mullins, head coach for Troy. She was an assistant for three teams that made five trips to the NCAA tournament, including three seasons as an assistant at Mississippi State in the SEC. So she has experience coaching in the NCAA tournament. This is something new for the players, however, as they get set to face Clemson here in the home half of the fourth inning. Kaya Keller fouls off the first pitch from Blazing Game for strike one. Keller singled in the second and was caught stealing. 
Three home runs for Clemson. Three run shot in the first, back to back shots in the third. One on one. You know, Eric, after listening to Coach Mullins, I think I'm going to have to add an extra column on my score sheet for quabs or quality at bats is what she was trying to, <laughs> to say there. So she's trying to get more quality at bats on the board. But I like the word quab. I think I'm going to add it to my score sheet. I, I was going to ask you to decipher that. Grounded to Gayton at third, getting Keller one away. That's what the cool people are saying now, Eric, is quabs. Quabs. Okay. <laughs> you know, in basketball, we have blobs and slobs. Are you familiar with blobs and slobs? Uh, I, no, I am not. I, Baseline out of bounds play, sideline out of bounds play. Right, so in right. softball, I got to add quab to my. <laughs> acronym list, which is quickly growing. It's a good Scrabble word, by the way, because you just need more Q words. So if we can get that into the Scrabble <laughs> dictionary, I feel like this is a win for everybody here who plays Scrabble. <laughs> One down for Abby Stewart's. Stewart struck out facing Johnson in the second. Anna Johnson struck out five, but left with one out in the third inning. That's in on the hands, blooped towards first and grabbed by Webb. Two down. Take a look at the bracket here in the Tuscaloosa region, presented by Capital One. Alabama taking on Alabama State, about six o'clock Eastern time. You can see that on the SEC network. The winner of this game will take on the winner of that game to get things started tomorrow at noon Eastern time. The first of three games on the schedule, the first elimination game will take place between the loser of this game and the loser of the next game between Alabama and Alabama State. Another fly ball. This one hit pretty well to left field. Lively has it, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Blazing Game. 6-0 Clemson after four. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Game one in Tuscaloosa. Clemson with three home runs on top of Troy. 6-0 after four. Johnson with the start. Blasting game in relief for Troy. Clemson getting the home run from Kegel, an outstanding pitching performance from Kegel with 10 strikeouts. Three run homer, a two run homer, and a solo shot accounting for the runs. Three run shot by Logaleo, two run shot by Kegel, solo shot by Gambarda, and Kegel is done in the circle and giving way to Millie Thompson here in the fifth. Well, Millie Thompson's going to be a completely different look, of course, coming from the left side. She's got a curveball, drop ball combination. She will also mix her change in there as well. And Eric, we talked about it earlier in this broadcast about how these coaches need to be strategic with their pitchers and how they use them. And here Clemson knows they've got a six-run lead here, a six-run cushion. And so they want to make sure that they rest up Cagle's arm for the rest of this weekend. 16th appearance for Thompson. All but one of her appearances have been starts, so her second relief appearance. Remember the all-freshman team in the ACC from Bedford, Virginia. Valerie Cagle's not going to leave the game. She's going to go head out to right field. One and two. Calhoun struck out facing Cagle in the second. Ten strikeouts for Cagle, struck out the final three batters she faced to wrap up a pretty impressive four innings of shutout work. Strikeout throw out to get Calhoun. Ariel Oda is in left field. She hit for Matamore. Top of the order now for Troy here in the fifth. Sinis 
who's 0 for 1 with a walk. Opponents hitting 253 against Millie Thompson this season. 68 strikeouts now for her and 69 innings of work. 2 0. Clemson looking to join Duke as winners in the first round out of the ACC. Duke also making their first NCAA appearance. And the 13 seeds picking up a win in Athens, 2-0 over UNC Greensboro. Caroline Jacobson a home run. That pitching combination of Shelby Waters and Peyton St. George effective again, shutting out Greensboro. So into the winner's bracket for Duke. Georgia and Western Kentucky, the other two teams in Athens. Three and one now the count to Sinis. Got Troy making their first appearance since 96. Clemson and Duke making their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament, but those are two of six teams making their debut. Villanova winning their first Big East title, earning a spot in the NCAA tournament. That's a walk to Sinis with one down here in the fifth. Second so time interesting. she's been on base today. I was going to say, it's so interesting. Duke, too, being the top seed playing in Athens. So the question is, can they take that home field advantage mentality on the road to Jack Turner Stadium? They were not chosen as one of the 20 predetermined sites back when those were picked the last week of April. But the committee really liked how they went on a 14 and one run to end up the seat or to round out the season. And that's why they ultimately were awarded with that top 16 seed. Oh, one to Katie Webb. Who's one for two, singled in the first. Down the count, 0 and 2. That singled the only hit for Troy against Valerie Cagle in her four innings of work. Cagle did walk three, struck out 10. Now, Eric, we've seen Coach Mullins do this a time or two with Katie Webb up at the plate. Looking back at that Sunbelt Conference tournament, there was a, a situation where Katie Webb came up with runners at first and third base, and she swung at a rise ball out of the zone. And Coach called time to have a conversation with her, and it looks like we're seeing exactly that. This is just a conversation to help her refocus and her at bat. She's a player that might go up there and put too much pressure on herself to get a certain result in this situation. You know she's trying to get a couple of runs across the board. And Coach, Coach Mullins there just trying to talk to her about refocusing and having a good solid good at bat. Little bloop and that works out. Well, whatever the coach said, bottle it because it results in a single. Not the hardest hit ball we've seen, <laughs> but you know what? It's a results business. And Katie Webb has the second hit of the game for Troy. She has both the hits. I'm telling you what, she's batting a thousand whenever Coach Mullins comes out and has a conversation <laughs> with her because that first and third situation back last week, she came up and hit a double. Here she gets a single over to the left side. She's looking at her coach going, you know what? Might not have been the best hit, but it gets the job done. It looks like a line <laughs> drive in the books, doesn't it, Katie Webb? That sets things up for Kelly Horn. Well, the door propped open a little bit here for Troy. Cagle out of the game. As Madison mentioned, you got to try to manage things. You got to think ahead. But now with two on and one out and the dangerous horn at the plate, Troy has a chance to get right back into things here. I think that Coach Rittman was trying to capitalize on the fact that the first three batters of this inning were all left-handed going up against the left-handed Millie Thompson in the circle, but she was just having a hard time consistently finding the strike zone to a couple of those batters. Good point. Now having trouble finding the strike zone against the right-handed hitting horn.
There's a strike. It's three and one. Sunshine tips in the high 80s in Tuscaloosa. It'll be in the low 90s Saturday and Sunday, but low humidity. It's not so oppressive down in Alabama. Humidity, low 30s at first pitch. Uh, very comfortable late spring day in Tuscaloosa. Three and one to count the horn. Horn sends a fly ball to right field. That is Cagle in right field to get the out. Runners hold. Big out there for Thompson. Two down. Really nice piece of hitting by Horn taking that pitch and driving it opposite field. And off the bat, I thought it was going to be a good opportunity for Jade Sinis at second base to tag up and run over to third base. But I think she thought that ball was going to be down, ended up taking a big jump off of second and wasn't able to get back in time to tag up and get to third. So the runner, runners hold up at first and second after that long ball out to right field. So John Rittman talking it over with his battery. Six-nothing Clemson, game number one at the Tuscaloosa Regional. Game number two coming up about 6 o'clock Eastern time, Alabama and Alabama State. Katie Lively, take strike one. Lively struck out twice facing Cagle. <laughs> oh, and two. I'd imagine that's exactly what the conversation was, making sure that she was pounding the strike zone, getting ahead of these batters. First, first pitch, she comes in with that nice looking changeup. Comes in with the curveball to follow for strike two. Ground ball to third, and Logaleo goes for the tag to get the out, and Thompson gets out of the jam. 6 nothing Clemson after four and a half. Get your outrigger canoe, get your paddles, and make your way down to St. Petersburg Beach, St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Log on to the website for more information, and we hope to see you February of 2022. I don't know about you. That's a pretty good arm workout right there for Clemson I mean, during that changeover. Do they practice that? I think they do. <laughs> I hope that so. was very I mean, synchronized. They're rowing takes, their boat down to St. Pete. Takes balance. That's right. It's one way to get there. <laughs> Ashley Gilstrap to lead things off against Kinsley Ray Blassing Game. 0 2. I don't think Gilstrap was a fan of that drop ball called. Lowing into her on that one. Ground ball through. Gill straps aboard for the second time today. Was hit by a pitch in the first. Lead off single. <laughs> That's the best way to, hey, you know what? That's the best way to respond when an umpire calls a pitch that maybe you don't necessarily agree with. You know that typically, hey, the pitcher's going to go right back to that spot knowing that you didn't like it. And she takes the exact same pitch, pokes it right back up the middle for a leadoff base hit. Here's Valerie Cagle. 
Waits on the pitch, sends another fly ball out to left center field, and out of here again! A two-run shot for Cagle, and that will walk things off for Clemson. A run roll, two-run shot, Valerie Cagle goes deep. Another homer that left the park in an instant, and Clemson wins their first ever game in the NCAA tournament. And this one was on a changeup. She is the queen of hitting balls so hard that we're not sure if they're going to make it out, but they do. What a big time hit by Valerie Cagle to end the ball game. Valerie Cagle walked and scored in the first, hit a two-run homer in the third, hit a two-run homer to end things in the fifth as Clemson wins it by a final score of eight to nothing in the fifth. What a performance by Valerie Cagle. The bucket hat could work once, but Valerie said, I'm not going to let it work twice. What a great job in the circle and at the plate. It's our Capital One rewarding performance. Well, Valerie Cagle can truly do it all. A fantastic performance in the circle and doing it up at the plate as well, driving balls out of the park with a, within a split second. We weren't sure if they were going to make it out because she hit them so hard, making an amazing adjustment on a changeup, blasting it out of the yard to end the ball game early. This was the final one, as Madison mentioned, waited on a changeup, another one that was just a few yards off the field. No doubt about the contact. I mean, it hits it so hard, but they go out in an instant, and Valerie Cagle ends it for Clemson. But her day's not done yet because Valerie joins us now. Valerie, congratulations. First of all, your first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. I don't know if you could have come up with a better script, but how did it feel to you to be such a key contributor in the circle and at the plate? I mean, yeah, I got the big hits, you know, and I got to start in the circle, but our team, you know, throughout the whole game just had really good energy, and that's when we play our best. Uh, is when we're just having fun, and, you know, you see all the props that we have, and, you know, they're rowing the boat, and <laughs> we just, you know, we play so much better, and we have fun, and that's what we did today. And now, Valerie, walk me through that last at-bat. You made an amazing adjustment on a changeup. What was your mindset stepping into the box? Um, for me, it was just looking middle out, and, you know, if the pitch is off speed, you know, I, I know I can sit on that. So just, you know, kind of looking for that spot, and she just threw it there. Valerie, we haven't seen every one of your 17 home runs this year, but the two we saw today weren't but a few feet off the ground. I mean, is that generally, you hit it well, but they're not the towering majestic shots like we saw from Marissa, who hit the back-to-back -back against you. <laughs> Tell us about just your approach at the plate, because it looks like you're just trying to hit line drives, and they just stay in the air long enough to go out. Yeah, for me, it's always, you know, just hit the, you know, just, hit just under the bottom half of the ball. So, you know, and... If you hit at that spot, you know, it's going to get backspin and it's going to carry. So, you know, sometimes I'll get the big towering ones, but most of the time it's just a solid line shot. So, Valerie, we have to know, do you have a favorite? Do you prefer striking out 10 batters or going up there <laughs> and blasting two balls out of the park? You know, today I think it was the two home runs. Um, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't typically have like a favorite. Um, I've never been able to choose if I like pitching or hitting better. But today it was really fun um, hitting the home runs and just being able to come back into the dugout to my teammates. Valerie, I know you're an unselfish, unassuming freshman, but the correct answer really is, I'd like to have it all, and you had it all today. So congratulations <laughs> on you. the two home runs and the win with the 10 strikeouts and a great start to your NCAA tournament career. Congrats, Valerie. Thank you. Valerie Cagle with the two-run shot in the third, the two-run shot in the fifth, four runs batted in, three runs scored. So Clemson is the first team that moves on here in Tuscaloosa. They will take on the winner of our next game between Alabama, the SEC Tournament Champions, and Alabama State. That game will begin at 6 Eastern time. Troy's season is not done. They will be playing tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 Eastern time in our first elimination game. For Madison Shipman and our entire crew, I'm Eric Freed. So long for now from Tuscaloosa. Clemson wins it in five by a final score of 8-0. Game two of our regional between Alabama State 
And Alabama comes your way 6 o'clock Eastern time, 5 Central, over on the SEC Network. Congrats to Valerie Cagle and Clemson. Big winners on day one.